Rosie takes charge. Rosie loves to work on the island of Sodor. She is very happy to do any job she's given, whether stealing with trucks or taking passengers along the line. She loves to be a really useful engine. Sometimes Rosie wishes that she could be as important as any other engine. One day, Rosie puffed into Great Waterton Station. The fat controller was talking to him and Gordon. Engines, I need someone to collect the workman's train and scaffolding and bring it here. The water tower needs to be repaired and strengthened. Rosie was excited to hear this. She whistled cheerfully. Please, sir, let me do that job. Thank you, Rosie, but you have your own work to do. Henry can do the job. He's strong enough to pull the scaffolding and the works coach. Rosie felt disappointed. Never mind, Rosie. You wouldn't have been chosen anyway. You should leave those sorts of jobs to the big important engines. This made Rosie a little cross. She thought she was an important engine too. Rosie made her way to Nutford Station. She was hoping that she'd be able to have an important job soon. I'd like to be in charge of something big. But what? If only I could be given that chance. Rosie popped into Nutford Station and Tom swiped to leave for his passenger train. Hello Rosie. What's the matter? You look like you've had very bad news. I want to be in charge of a very important job, but Gordon and Henry don't think I'm up for the job. Take no notice. They are just being too big for their buffers. Then James bustled in with a passenger train. What's this I hear? You want an important job, Rosie? Don't make me laugh. What's so funny, James? A little engine like you given an important job. That's not suitable for the Fat Controllers Railway. This made Rosie cross. I can be important too. I may be small, but that doesn't mean I can't be trusted. We little engines may not be as strong as you big engines, but we can get the job done too. Ha! You little engines don't know how to be important. We big engines know a lot about it. That's why we are given the best jobs on the railway. Thomas and Rosie thought James was being too big for himself. You might as well forget it, Rosie. You'll never be as important as us big engines. You just stay with your little job shunting trucks and delivering goods. That's all you little engines are good at doing anyway. James puffed away feeling very proud of himself. Then Thomas's guard blew his whistle. Don't worry, Rosie. You'll get to be important one day. I must go. My passengers are relying on me. Rosie watched as Thomas left for his branch line. She was starting to feel very small. And being small didn't just make Rosie feel sad, but very ashamed too. That night, Rosie couldn't sleep. James, Gordon and Henry's words just wouldn't leave her boiler. They flew around like leaves in the wind. It's not fair. Why can't I be important too? I am a special engine, just like anyone else. She looked up at the sky and saw the stars. Then, out of nowhere, one shot right across. <gasps> a shooting star! Rosie decided to make a wish. I wish I could be given an important job. The next morning, Rosie puffed towards Nightfish Station to see the fat controller. When she arrived, she saw Gordon, Henry, and James were there waiting. Rosie stopped a few yards away from the fat controller while he spoke to the big engines. There are lots of trucks that need to be shunted at Tidmouth Station. They need to be sorted out and ready for when Murdoch and Neville arrive to collect their trains. So I will need you three to tidy up the yards. The big engines all looked at each other. They didn't want to shunt trucks! But they knew that really useful engines have to do what they were told. Yes, yes sir. sir! And I will need someone to take charge of the job. But I will need to be sure I can trust one of you. Rosie heard this and quickly puffed forward. Please, sir, may I take charge of this important job? I may be a little engine, but I can handle the work just as well as any other engines. Gordon, Henry and James sniggered quietly to each other. Rosie was starting to feel doubtful. But the fat controller looked at Rosie, and then smiled. I don't see why not. Very well, Rosie. You will be in charge of this shunting job. What? Rosie smiled from buffer to buffer. Oh, thank you, sir. You're very welcome, Rosie. 
Can I trust you to make sure that both trains are ready for Murdoch and Neville's arrival? Yes, sir. You can rely on me. The Fat Controller returned to his office. Henry, Gordon, and James couldn't believe what they heard. This made them cross. Rosie? In charge of an important job like this? It's disgraceful! It's disgusting! It's despicable! Come on, you three. We have a job to do. Let's not waste any time. Follow me, please. And Rosie set off out of the station, with three big cross engines following behind. As they puffed along, Rosie was very excited about her new job she had been entrusted with. I wonder what kind of trucks we are going to be shunting. I hope there will be lots of trucks. Then that will be fun. But Gordon, Henry and James were thinking more about how the fat controller could have made a mistake. They thought it would have been better for one of them to be in charge. When they arrived at the station, they could see the yards were full of trucks, open wagons, vans, flatbeds, and wagons. Rosie quickly made her first decision. Right then, I'll handle the open wagons. James, you can sort out the flatbeds. Gordon, you can deal with the wagons. And you, Henry, the vans are all yours. Rosie whistled happily as she went to work. No. Rosie was enjoying herself, but she wasn't liking how the big engines were handling their work. Gordon was shunting his trucks into line, but he wasn't happy. He bumped his trucks. This took Rosie by surprise. Gordon, be careful! Those trucks can be easy to damage! Gordon thought Rosie was being a little bossy. Don't stick your nose into my shunting! Rosie just carried on with her work. Hmm. Then, James was shunning his flatbeds into a sandwich. He wasn't looking where he was going. Rosie was collecting some more open wagons from the nearby side. Suddenly, James' trucks hit the buffers with a thud. James, you need to watch where you're going. You could have had an accident. James felt cross, but just puffed away. Rosie was not liking this at all. Henry, meanwhile, had shunted some vans into the station. Rosie saw this and came over to talk to Henry. You can't leave the vans into the station. No one is using the station at the moment, so I can leave them there. But supposing a passenger train could come in and wants to stop at the platform. Move those vans to the siding, please. Henry just snorted and went to move the vans. At the water towers, Gordon, Henry, and James were talking about Rosie. Rosie doesn't deserve to be in charge. She's being bossy. She told me off for hitting the buffers. It was a mistake. And she told me to be careful. I don't know how much more of this I can take. Agreed. Something has to be done. But what? Then Gordon had an idea. Maybe if we don't do any work at all, then Rosie will realize how wrong she was for bossing us around. Then she will have to say how sorry she is and let us show her how to shunt trucks. You don't mean... Go on strike? Exactly. This sounded like a good idea, so they began to make their plan. When Rosie returned from taking on coal and water, she saw the big engines still in their sightings. This made her cross, so she went to see what was going on. What's going on? Why aren't you all working? We aren't moving from this siding. We are not going to move another truck until you stop being so silly. Stop being silly. Come on, we've got a job to do. We're not going, Rosie. We won't follow orders from a little engine like you. We are big, important and experienced engines. You are just a little one. You have no idea what it feels like to be important. We won't go back to work until you say how sorry you are for being so bossy. Then maybe we'll do some shunting. Oh! Well, I never heard such stuff and nonsense like that ever! I was not being bossy. I was just trying to help you. But if you want to stay here and waste my time, then be my guests. But I'm not going to say sorry for something I haven't done. Rosie puffed back to work feeling insulted. She'll be back. 
I hope. Rosie was now busier than ever. She now had to handle Gordon, Henry, and James' work as well as her own. It was using up a lot of puff, but she was a quick engine. She pushed some of the trucks under the chutes, then pushed some more into a siding by the turntable. Gordon, Henry, and James watched in surprise as Rosie pushed and pulled every truck she could find. When Rosie had finally finished, she was very tired and nearly out of puff. Gordon, Henry, and James thought Rosie's exhausted look was very funny. And I thought you said you were an important engine. Important engines never get exhausted. Maybe you should stick to the little jobs in future, little Rosie. Rosie took no notice of them. Then the fat controller arrived. He was very impressed when he saw how tiny the yards looked. Well, well, Rosie. I am very amazed. You have worked very hard today. I hope you haven't had too much trouble. Well, sir. I had to do the rest of the work myself. Those big engines wouldn't help me out. They've been complaining about me being in charge. The fat controller was surprised. He went over to the water towers. What has been going on here? Why has Rosie told me about you three engines leaving her to do all the work? The big engines felt speechless. Rosie was bossing us about, sir. She was complaining about our shunting skills. She doesn't know how to be in charge, sir. Well, I think all of you have been very silly engines. Today, Rosie has proved that she is a trustworthy, dependable, and a really useful engine. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. Gordon, Henry, and James looked at each other in dismay. So for your punishment, you will all be working with trucks until you can learn to respect engines like Rosie. She may be small, but she is very special too. Rosie felt very pleased with herself. Then, she saw Murdoch and Neville back up to their trains of trucks. Thank you, Rosie! We hear you have worked well today! You are certainly an engine that can be trusted. Yes indeed, Murdoch. Yes indeed. Rosie, I am very proud of you. So I think you can go back to the yards and have a nice long rest. What do you think of that? Oh, sir. I would like that very much. So Rosie raced out of Timothy's yards and towards her shed. On the way back, she saw Thomas being a signal. She pulled up alongside him. Thomas could see his friends looking very happy. Hello, Rosie. You look delighted about something. I have completed the bestest job ever, and I did it all by myself. I thought Gold and Henry and James were helping too. Well, they weren't being as useful as I hoped, but I guess that's what happens when you try to show them a few tricks of your own. In that case, well done Rosie. You certainly are a really useful engine. This made Rosie feel very happy, and she couldn't have felt more prouder than to not only be special, too.